Shalom. This is Nizama Shalhamada Bar Yasharal on my channel Nizama the Hebrew Mystic Healer. As always, before I get started, I'd like to show some love to my 3D Ken, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Hebrew Israelites scattered to the four corners of this third dimensional earth plane of existence. Much love and shalom to you. I'd also like to show some love to my cosmic kin, the primordial Nibiru Nunakai star seeds scattered to the 12 dimensions of this cosmic universal egg matrix. Much love and shalom to you as well. And as always, show some love and support to my viewers, especially those of you who are subscribed. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so now and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Also, if you like this video, be sure and tell me by giving it a like. It does help. So today I'm going to cover a few topics that have been heavy on my mind. I'm going to sort of free flow with this video, guys. I know it's not the first time I've done this, but it's not something I do very often. I want to cover some topics that are really prevalent in a lot of the, you know, quote unquote, conscious and spiritual communities starseed communities, so on and so forth, and also within like some of the conspiracy theory communities as well. I really feel like it's important to touch on the moon. There's a lot of people that feel that the moon is a hologram, that the moon is a space station, that the moon is not real, or the moon is actually evil or dark. And I just want to say that this whole concept really bothers me because I view it as a continuation of some of the issues I pointed out in recent videos about the whole vilification of the divine feminine. As the moon is a feminine quality and feminine current and feminine luminary, which is exactly what she is. So she is, on one level an aspect of the primordial mother, a reflection of, an expression of the primordial mother. She is a luminary. Her job is to illuminate. She's very much tied to the feminine currents that are expressions on this earth as well, and tied to the oceans, tied to the seasons, tied to the magnetic frequencies and fields. She is her own being. She is her own luminary. A luminary is a being. Stars are luminaries. What they call as planets are luminaries. And really a planet is just a plane of existence. The earth is a plane of existence. The earth is also conscious and a being. Also feminine. Not saying all luminaries are feminine, but the earth and the moon are feminine. Water is considered a feminine principal element. Earth is as well. So the moon is not fake. Now, I know I say in the intros of my videos that, you know, the moon, the basically the universe, I call it the universal egg matrix, or sometimes I'll say holographic egg matrix. It's not in the sense to how people feel it. It's not that I feel like there's some beings on the outlands, you know, beyond the scope of the universe and they're just projecting this like artificial construct. That's not what I mean by holographic. What I mean by holographic is that as consciousness and planes of consciousness and dimensions and planes of existence, our collective consciousness helps shape our reality. So it's not that I'm looking at this as like literally like an artificial construct in the sense that we think of like artificial, like, a, you know, AI intelligence on 3D, so to speak, like it's like it's a machine at that level, but that it is really a, con a construct of consciousness. It is a created construct, but also alive, also a being. So this whole concept of the moon being a fake or a hologram or a space station is really another attempt to kind of abstract and distance ourselves from 
our connection within this universal expression and our connection with the divine feminine. Because think about it. If we start believing that the moon is fake, then why would we follow the natural lunar cycles? Which, by the way, the oldest societies had a combination of a solar, lunar, and stellar calendar. Every luminary, every cycle made up the fullness of that calendar. It's a natural cycle. And the moon has a faster cycle, the sun has a slower cycle, and the stars have an even slower cycle. So moon, you know, is for months. Sun is for both seasons and when a day ends and begins. And the stars are for ages. So all of this fits together. And the calendar that we're on right now is artificial. You talk about artificial. The Gregorian calendar is artificial. So that's what's artificial. The calendar. And the Gregorian calendar is a combination of basically um, Roman, celestial, and planetary worship and commerce. But it's not according to the natural cycles of the luminaries. It's actually more geared toward commerce. It's more static. It's more more artificial. And it was actually created in order to control. Because guess what? The types of cycles that we're on, if they're not in tune to the natural cycles of the earth and the luminaries, they're in tune to something else. So whatever cycle or whatever calendar we're connected to, that has an effect on our consciousness. We are connected to that construct. That in of itself is a layer of the matrix. So I wanted to just kind of cover that real quick. It's disrespectful to the moon as an expression of the divine feminine to, you know, say that the moon is fake, that it's a holographic projection. And I don't believe anything that NASA says anyway, so I don't care what pictures they show. You know, if you guys have seen my, my video on the NASA deception, you know where I stand. In fact, if you haven't watched my video on the luminaries and, and the construct of the universe, the deception of NASA and all of that, definitely check out that video um, to correlate with this one so you can get a better understanding of how I view the universe. Like, Because this also has to do with how you know, my, my, why my Akashic records work the way they do, why they're a little different than a lot of people out there. Because I don't follow the NASA concept of the universe of, you know, the Big Bang, one universe, spheric planets, you know, and all of that. I don't follow that. So if you guys want to know how I, how I follow it, definitely check that out. I follow the more ancient you know, understanding of the universal egg and the planes of existence within that universal egg. And that there is a multiverse of eggs, and I've seen it myself. I've seen it. So, uh, moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, I also wanted to go over something semi-related, and I know I touched on this in my NASA Deception video too, but this whole thing of ETs, I don't, I'm going to tell you right now, most of what people think are ETs or EDs or extra dimensionals are not from some planet, again, because that is a bullshit NASA belief system. They're from other dimensions, other planes of existence. Some of them aren't even from this universe. They're not from another terrestrial, because that ET means they're from a different planet. The Earth is a plane. It's not a sphere. It's not a planet. It's a plane of existence. It's a realm. So they're from another realm or dimension. That's why they're called extra dimensionals. EDs is what I call them. So when people say, oh, what kind of ET race am I from? Or, hey, do you believe in ETs or planets? No, I don't. I think it's bullshit. 
And I think that when people are channeling messages like that, they're either filtering it through their understanding of NASA because they were brainwashed that way from kids, or they're being lied to. And remember, guys, this is something else to think about. I'm not trying to freak anybody out. But remember, the government does have 4D tech, and they do have uh, mind control subliminal message technology. They have EMF frequencies that they can put out that actually mimic certain um, spirit guides or certain guides, like they can actually put those frequencies and messages out. So when people channel, especially when you hear channeling and it sounds real um, vague and it sounds real almost um, artificial sounding, you know, especially if it sounds kind of like a machine where they'll announce themselves the same being or the same thing every time you're channeling, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, like literally every sentence, so-and-so says this, you know, or it sounds like really wordy, but yet vague, like they're not really giving you any concrete information, that's usually, that's usually like a signal or frequency put out. And it's not, you're not actually tapping in to your own records or your own, you know, soul family. You're not tapping into your own oversoul. You're actually tapping in to these deception programs. And sometimes they're egregores too. Sometimes their thought forms are created with a certain amount of information. So they'll seem to have information that you don't have. You're like, oh, whoa, I didn't know that. And they're still feeding you bullshit. Because... They're not actually what they're saying they are. And that's why when, you know, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying I don't believe in the concept of star seeds, but I don't believe a lot of the pseudo new age shit that's out and prevalent within the star seed, you know, dogma, the common, commonly held star seed dogma. You know, I don't believe in a lot of this. So, you know, there were channeled there were channeled sessions like when channeling first started coming out as a thing, specifically like during the seventies and stuff and and like early eighties, where they were first saying that they were from these places like Venus and all these other areas, and then all of a sudden they started changing it, and they started saying they were from these places that were further and further away because then there's no way to really document whether or not that's what was happening. So. Am I saying that there are not star beings? Of course I'm not saying that. I I know because I believe in soul stars. I believe that every luminary is its own expression. It's a soul expression. And when we incarnate there, we take on aspects of that resonance within our cosmic DNA. Specifically, if we incarnate somewhere prominently or, you know, our first incarnation is going to be very, like, it's going to be deeply, you know, engraved within our cosmic DNA. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. And this whole concept of like ascension, everyone talks about ascending, but yet they don't even know where they're ascending to. How can you be ascending? How can you be awakened and enlightened when you don't even know where you're from, where you're having to ask other people where you're from. When you're quoting texts and other people's writings who have had spiritual experiences, when you're quoting them, but you're not able to access it yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, no disrespect. I'm not making fun of or being snide or facetious towards people who are not able to access their records at all. Because... We don't just, you know, most of us aren't just born that way. We have to activate that within ourselves. We have to work at that. But what I'm saying is, is that everybody and their brother is claiming to be a star seed or an angel seed or an earth angel, you know, or a God seed or a Messiah seed, all of this shit. But yet they don't know their head from their ass. They don't even have recollection of where they're from. So how are you ascending? Because 
you know, ascension means you're awakening, you're activating who you are. You can access that within yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you're not in the early stages. If you're awakening, it's a process. It takes a while. But, you know, ascension is not what people say. Ascension is you're literally leaving this particular plane of existence. You're literally ascending out. Your energy frequency can no longer even vibe here. Like, and you break your will, you leave. That's ascension. You know, ascension isn't, oh, well, I'm sitting here on 3D Earth, but I'm simultaneously on these other um, dimensions of Earth, or, or Earth is raising these other dimensions. Look, Earth already exists on all these dimensions, guys. There's already, the earth exists in several dimensions at once, so it's not raising to another dimension. Now, I'm not saying that our consciousness isn't becoming aware at various dimensions. That is different. So yes, we can, as we activate, we can become consciously aware of multiple dimensions at once. That's different. That's activating to your multidimensionality. That's not ascending to another dimension while you're still here. That's impossible. You may become aware of other dimensions of Earth or other dimensions of the cosmos and be activated at that level. But this is 3D Earth right now. This is 3D Earth. You would know if you were in 5D Earth. Five D Earth would be completely different than what we have going on right here. So you may be vibrating at a 5D level, you may have your Merkaba light body activated, but you're not walking around on 3D Earth, you know, I mean, excuse me, you're not walking around on 5D Earth on 3D Earth. That makes no sense. Your physical body would actually no longer be able, you wouldn't be able to even stay in your body here. You would literally just shed your shell and you would go on to the fifth dimension. That's what would happen. So, because the earth is already, already had, there is already a fifth dimensional earth. You know, you would either shed your body or your body would transform at such a high vibrational level that you would just cease existing at this dimension. You would just, your whole consciousness would just shift into a whole nother dimension of earth. You wouldn't even be here. It would be like you disappeared. You want to talk about rapture. That's rapture. <laughs> we'll talk about rapture tests. That's what that is. You know, when people ascend up to heaven, if they're not being literally taken to another plane, you know, by another being, like when they're just ascending up, that's what that is. That's, that's ascension. If you're still walking around here in your 3D avatar body, talking about how you're in 5D Earth, or how the Earth is saying to 5D Earth when there is already a 5D Earth, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm sorry. And this is kind of that pseudo-ascension stuff that is just like, it's really got people to see, because people are just waiting, you know, with everything going on in 3D Earth right now, people are just waiting for things to just magically shift and change not understanding that yes when we do raise our vibration when we do activate it does affect the world around us absolutely but you know awakening is being able to activate all that within yourself being able to awaken and activate on all levels of your multidimensionality all levels of your cosmic tree so going back to what i said originally if you're saying that you know you're vibing on a higher dimension, but yet you can't even access your oversoul, what dimension are you on then? Where are you at? How are you awakened? So this whole like pseudo, you know, ascension thing is really actually another, you know, clap trap for people because they're not really going within and activating themselves from within, you know, they're basically waiting for some event to take place on the external. And this is that same issue with the whole savior program mentality of everyone's waiting for some external savior. 
instead of awakening and activating themselves within, instead of enacting their sovereign, you know, expression as a sovereign divine being. So, I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but that's just the truth. I'm not speaking ill of people who are star seeds. I mean, I myself, you know, I was first seated in the celestial realm when I entered this universe. So that makes me a star seed technically. I was also an angel seed because I was a seraphim when I entered the universe. And I'm also a primordial. I'm also a nunukai because I was primordial Nibiru outside the universe when I entered in. So, multidimensional. And it is possible to have access at various different dimensions while we're down here. But we're not in 5D if we're still in 3D. We may have limited access there. We may have certain aspects of our consciousness unlocked there. But, you know, there's already a 5D Earth. All of these realities, all these reality fields, all these dimensions and stuff, they exist simultaneously. So I think I'm just going to wrap up the video with that. And I uh, hope I didn't go on too much of a tangent, guys. But I hope that, that you found this video beneficial. Stay tuned. If you guys are interested in an Akashic Reader, you want to have an Akashic reading, then definitely hit me up. I have my link in the drop down menu. I can access pre-universal origins, first universal incarnation and other incarnations as well. And if you're interested in activating, learning how to activate, learning how to awaken and having those tools at your disposal to activate within yourself, definitely hit me up on Patreon because I teach a lot of beneficial techniques you know, and these are tools and techniques that you can use your entire life at your own pace, and it will help you activate. That's guaranteed. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Take care and shalom.